Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, I order a peculiar drink, Beetlejuice. Ben sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Herarosaurid dinosaurs, rhynchosaurs, cynodonts, early itosaurs, and what might be a dicynodont. And I... Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society has analysed incredibly old records of one of our most famous close stellar neighbours, Betelgeuse. This supergiant star has been a favourite of astronomers for thousands of years, being the closest supergiants to Earth. Records from across the world all seem to suggest that Betelgeuse was a noticeably different colour 2,000 years ago than it is today. Many records made comparisons between the colour of different stars, marking Betelgeuse out as yellow and a different colour to the star Antares. Today, however, Betelgeuse's colour is quite similar in brightness and colour to Antares, suggesting a major change in colour as Betelgeuse enters the latter stages of its life. Among many other studies, this one helps us estimate Betelgeuse's life to further accuracy, with the current estimate being that it will supernova in about 1.5 million years. And just a quick update on NASA's Artemis launch last Saturday, it unfortunately had to be cancelled again due to a leak in the hydrogen fuel tank as it was being filled with fuel. Unlike the sensor faults of the last launch delay, this issue will likely require a far longer delay as it requires a more thorough physical investigation and fix, although it is yet unknown as to when the leak will be fixed. It could be over a month before another launch is attempted with the SLS rocket. And now over to Ben, with another packed paleontology section. Thanks Doug. Well, it's been another very productive week for paleontological discoveries, especially dinosaurs. First up is a paper describing a new genus and species of a belisaurid dinosaur, discovered in Argentina. Named Elemgasem nubilis, this new medium-sized theropod is known from some vertebrae and limb bones, and displays features of its tail vertebrae that differentiate it from every other known abelisaurid. Importantly, this new taxon comes from a time in the late Cretaceous between the Turonian and Coniacian stages, a time in which abelisaurids had previously been unknown anywhere in the world making this a significant addition to our understanding of abelisaur diversity during this pivotal age of the Cretaceous. Also in the news this week was the announcement of the oldest dinosaurs ever found in Africa. An amazing new fossil assemblage dating to the start of the late Triassic has been reported in Zimbabwe, and among these fossils are the oldest definitive dinosaurs to be found on the continent. One of these, a sauropodomorph, has been named as Embirisaurus rathi and is known from a remarkably complete skeleton including bones from most parts of the body. It's positioned in a very basal part of the sauropodomorph lineage, putting it close to the origin of these dinosaurs. But that's not all they found. A spectacular assemblage of animals has been reported from this site, including currently unnamed herarosaurid dinosaurs, rhynchosaurs, cynodonts, early itosaurs, and what might be a dicynodont. Amazingly, this kind of assemblage of animals is very similar to other localities found at similar paleolatitudes at this time from South America and India, leading the researchers to suggest that similar kinds of animals must have been found across these high latitudes of Pangaea, and that the early distribution of dinosaurs was potentially linked to climatic barriers, with the animals only being able to spread across the rest of the ancient world once those barriers became less significant. It's an absolutely incredible study with so many implications for the origin of dinosaurs and tells us a lot about the late Triassic world. And that's not the only paper with significant implications for the origin of a well-known animal group. This week has also seen the publication of a study looking at the jaws of a kind of cynodont that's very close to the origin of mammals from the late Triassic. This cynodont, Brazilodon, shows evidence that it replaced its teeth in a mammal-like style having only two sets of teeth throughout its life, a deciduous set and an adult one, instead of continuously replacing them as reptiles do. This finding pushes back the origin of this kind of tooth replacement, and potentially also the other traits it's linked to in modern mammals such as endothermy, the presence of fur, lactation, and maybe even parental care, to the Norian stage of the late Triassic. So this is a pretty major discovery too, challenging the time of origin for mammals, or at least mammal-like features. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's news. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on Saturday for the next episode in our South Africa series.